In this video, we're gonna take a look at two different methods for safely sharing your YouTube links with your students. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Mr. Cook's Corner, Education for Educators. This channel is all about helping teachers like you grow in your craft. If it's your first time watching, welcome aboard. Please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell if you like what you see today. Okay, when you're sharing YouTube links with students, it's often all too easy for them to go down the rabbit hole and find themselves in a world of hurt. That includes unnecessary comments, ads, and links to other videos that are totally inappropriate. How do we deal with this? Let me show you two different methods and then you can choose for yourself which you like the best. This first method involves regenerating your links using an online website. There are tons of them out there, but I wanna show you my absolute favorite one. All you need to remember are two words, video.link, type it into your browser address bar, hit enter, and off you go. There are several other website options, but in my opinion, this is the quickest and the easiest one to use. I am obligated to point out though that it does have an important notice at the bottom reminding you that you can only use videos that are free of copyright, things that you own, or videos that you've received permission to use by somebody else. That being said, it's a quick process and really easy to do. From the home page, all you have to do is paste in your YouTube link and then hit enter. There are a few convenient options right off the bat. One of them is it produces a QR code for you. You can click on it and then from there you can print that, save it, use it wherever you'd like. You can also share it through various social media outlets. Furthermore, you can customize and crop the video to your liking. Once you click on the crop button, it pops up a simple slider and you can set it however you'd like. And one more thing that you could do is if you want to embed it with HTML, it has the code for you right there in the center tab. However, the quickest and easiest way is how it sets it up immediately. You just hit safe URL, click the copy button, and then you paste it into a new tab. This is your default view. It's gonna have the video, it's removed all the ads, all the comments, all the links to new videos as well. So when this video is over, it will not direct users to another video. One super neat extra feature is called Bookmarklet. I highly recommend you add this if you're gonna use video link. When you click on this button, it gives you a draggable internet shortcut. All you do is grab it, drag it into your shortcut section, and now it's there for you to use whenever you need it. Now when you're surfing YouTube and you come across a video that you'd like to use, you can simply click on the video link button and it takes you directly to the link. This helps you skip an entire step with going over to the video link website, pasting in the URL, and then getting the copy link. If you add the bookmarklet to your shortcuts, it'll always be there for you to grab and go. This second method actually involves using Google Slides and it's a great way to stay within the Google ecosystem while you're teaching your students. Let's take a quick look. Once you have a YouTube link that you're ready to use, you simply go to insert, then you click on video. From here, you can actually search for YouTube videos, but if you have the one that you're looking for already, you click on URL and then just paste it. Once you've selected your video on the right hand side, you can crop the video however you'd like. And then on your slide, you can resize it, center it, move it wherever you need it to be. When it's time to watch the video, you can do it as a slide or you could do it in presentation mode, it doesn't matter. It will play automatically in the size that you ascribe to it. However, in the bottom right corner, you can still go full screen. And when the video finally ends, it will go back to the beginning screen and it will not suggest new videos. I will say, however, that there are two drawbacks with this method that you need to watch out for. One is that whenever you click play on a video, if a student watching clicks on the YouTube button where it says watch on youtube.com, it will then pop up the video in YouTube and you'll be back to where you started with comments, ads, and links to other videos. So it does take a little bit of training with your kids to remind them not to click on that. The other thing to note is that this only works with YouTube videos. You can't use Vimeo or any other non-Google related video sources. It has to be a YouTube video. Now, if you're recording your own videos, instead of uploading them to YouTube, you can avoid all the problems altogether by uploading them to Drive. And from there, you would just click Drive and insert videos natively. In the end, my personal recommendation is that you stick with the video.link method as it really is the only way to guarantee a safe viewing. However, if you choose to use the Google Slides method, again, just be sure to work with your kids and instill that in them not to click on that YouTube button as a way of watching the video, or at least inform your parents about it. That way they know when kids are at home that that's something that could happen. As always, we got plenty more where that came from. Be sure to check us out on social media. We're at mrcookscorner.com. Till then, see you next time. Bye.